Inna alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah. Surely all praise is due to Allah. Inna alhamdulillah. Nahmuduhu, and then again we praise Him. And we seek His assistance. And we orient ourselves solely towards Allah. And we thank Allah, we give shukr to Allah, and we start in the name of Allah. That same Lord who has given us His Rahmah, His mercy, and manifest that mercy in many ways. That He has manifested His mercy in allowing us to gather for Jummah, and allowing us to worship Him. Allowing us to worship Him. That often we see our, our worship as a khidmah, a service that we do to Allah. This is something that benefits us, it doesn't benefit Allah one bit. Allah doesn't need our worship, we need our worship to, towards Allah. We need, we need to worship Allah. The benefit, the benefit is for us. Allah is Ar Rahman, this Rahman and this Rahim, this most merciful God, this most merciful Lord has given us uh, a, a world in which we live in that is full of wisdom, that is full of hikmah. And amongst the hikmah that Allah has placed in this world is the um, the phenomena we know is we know is cause and effect. That that we, for example, might drop something and we expect it to fall. We drink water and we expect it to quench our thirst, and we eat food, we expect it to we, we expect it to satiate our hunger. That Allah has placed His hikmah in in these means that He has placed for us. That He has placed His He places wisdom in the means that He has given us, and we are people who take the means and recognize that everything still comes from Allah. That Allah allows us to drink the water, and Allah is the one who satiates, uh, who, who quenches our thirst. And so we find ourselves taking our means for all of our all of our worldly matters. We never stop and say, uh, I'm just going to wait for my sustenance to come. No, we, have, we, we go out and do our jobs. We never say, I'm going to wait for my hunger to be satiated. We wait, we actually go out and do the, do the steps to satiate our hunger. We eat, our, we eat food to satiate that hunger. But often we find ourselves being lax in the spiritual means. And we're people who should be taking spiritual means. Right now we are on, we're in the 21st of Rajab. That leaves about 40, that leaves a little bit less than 40 days to Ramadan. And the Prophet uh, it said that when, when Rajab came in, he would say, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban. وَبَلِّغْنَا رَمَضَانِ The place of Baraka for us in Rajab and Sha'aban and allow us to reach Ramadan. But the concern for Ramadan didn't start on the first of Ramadan. It didn't start the night before. It didn't start the night before when everyone's sighting the moon. It didn't start the first day. It didn't start until everything's kind of settled in and people got used to the fast and the coffee headache was gone. That's not when the concern for Ramadan starts. The concern for Ramadan starts much before. It starts at the minimum in the, in the beginning of Rajab. That one of the Salaf had said that Rajab is the time to plant the seeds and Sha'aban, we're nine months away from Sha'aban. Sorry, nine, nine days away, month, uh, away from Sha'aban. Sha'aban is the time to water those seeds and then Ramadan is the time to cultivate those seeds. So that when we expect to find a spiritual benefit in Ramadan, we need to take our spiritual means before then. We can't expect that the, the train of shaitan be derailed immediately on the first of Ramadan if we don't stop, if we don't stop to take the means to derail that train, to break our habits or to build better habits. Perhaps we have we might not have touched the Quran in a while. Perhaps we may have gotten lax with our prayers, perhaps we may have gotten lax with uh, with our fasting, perhaps we haven't fasted since Ramadan. And it's going to hit us hard. It hits us hard if we if we aren't used to it. So we take our spiritual means. Allah, if we want the spiritual effects, we also take our spiritual means. The same way we take in our material means. When we take our material means, we expect the material the material effect. The same way we, we should take the spiritual means and, and expect the spiritual effect. So a lot of times we find ourselves in Ramadan. Perhaps towards the end of it is when we start to to really to, to really feel the blessing of the month. And then we, then, then we, then we, you know, we, we, we find ourselves enjoying the prayer. We find ourselves enjoying Quran. Why not start that earlier? Why not start in Rajab and plant those seeds? Pick up the Quran off the, sh off the shelf. 
fast, a few extra nawaf no, no, uh, fasts, a few uh, recommended fasts, and take our spiritual means so that when the time comes in Ramadan, that we find the spiritual effect of those means we took manifest. And so we might tell ourselves, well, I haven't touched the Quran in a while. I don't remember how to read, or I haven't, uh, I haven't um, prayed this prayer on time, or I haven't done this thing, on, and, and, and I haven't done this particular action in a while, or Rajab is almost over, it's too late for me. It's never too late. Allah, Allah is the one who's going to produce that effect. What we're asked to do is to take the means. What we're asked to do is to take the means. And so perhaps we haven't read Quran since, since the beginning of Rajab. It's not too late to start, it's still nine days. Perhaps we might not get a chance in Rajab. Or perhaps Allah may not give us the tawfiq, because we do have the time. Often we tell, our, we tell ourselves we don't have the time, but we do have the time. But Allah might give us His grace, His tawfiq, to allow us to pick up the Quran again, or to increase how much we read, to be able to make a khatam in Ramadan, or however much we can do. Perhaps we might tell ourselves, I don't understand what I'm reading. Well, your reward in reading Quran is not contingent, it's not dependent on whether you understand what you're reading or not. There's a there's ten blessings in every in every letter that you read. Right? We know in the hadith that alif la mean is not one the, the Prophet said that's not one that's not one hub. It's the alif is one half, the la is one half, the meme is one half. And there's ten ten hasanat, ten rewards for each one of them. Imagine the amount of rewards we we're going to be uh, accumulating. In, in, in Ramadan, and where, the, where, the, where the, the, the rewards are already multiplied. And so we want to multiply our rewards in Ramadan, and not just by the barakah of the time, but how much we do as well. And should we, we should get ourselves back into, the, back into the groove of things. Perhaps if we haven't touched the Quran, pick up the Quran again. If you, if you don't understand what you're reading, take some time to maybe read a translation in your own language, or listen to, if, 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 or listen to a lecture on your drive, explain one of your favorite surahs. Maybe visit a surah that you haven't read in a long time. Or maybe perhaps in this Ramadan, find yourself connected to a surah that you haven't, you haven't, you haven't even heard the name of in a long time. A lot of times, you know, there's a lot of surahs towards the middle of the Quran. We're not very familiar with them. We all know surah Mu'ad, we all know surah Waqiyah, surah Yasin, surah Kahab. We know these surahs. But what about some of the surahs we haven't had? Surah Ahzab, right? Where Allah is expounding on the on the, on the bounties He has given His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Right? The, 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 the one who is our means to thank up to Allah. Relatively short surah. Right? So if we haven't found ourselves engaging with the words of Allah, it would be difficult for us to, to find that spiritual effect that we're looking for. If we haven't found, our, found ourselves taking our spiritual means it would be difficult to find the spiritual effect. And we're not doing these actions for some sort of feeling, right? This is not a religion of feelings, this is a religion of, uh, of servitude towards Allah, right? Aslam yuslimu, Islam means to submit. So it's a, it's a religion of submission. And one of the byproducts is that you're going, to have, you're going to be closer towards Allah. Allah gives you Jannah. Allah gives you this and Allah gives you that. Allah might answer one of your prayers. Right, Ramadan is a time of prayers. Right after the ayat of Ramadan, Allah says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Right after those ayat of Ramadan in Surah Baqarah, He immediately says, the, uh, the ayat that follow immediately after that is, When my servant asks of me, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ That I am close. But if we distance ourselves from Allah, how will we feel that closeness? If we distance ourselves from Allah, how will we feel that closeness? Right, when we come to Allah when we need something. But how are we going to how are we going to, to, to find him proximate to us when we've distanced ourselves? Ujibu da'wat al da'i idha da'an. Immediately Allah says, I answer the call of the caller when he calls. Have we called in Allah in, 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 in our recent, you know, the, throughout since the last time Allah have we taken time to really stop and to, to purposely to very actively, with, with intention, call on Allah and show Allah our, 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 our absolute dependence on Him. Have we stopped to, to, to show Allah that I'm willing to take the means Allah 
I'm willing to serve you and perhaps Allah from your grace and from, from, from your mercy, from your love, from your from your kindness, perhaps you may give me some uh, 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 some of the some of the reward. And the sum of the reward is some of Allah's reward and some of Allah's mercy is more than we can imagine. A little bit of Allah's mercy is more than we can imagine. Anytime we think that we have understood Allah's mercy, then we should know we've underestimated it. We're, 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 we're a few, only a few days away from Allah. Ayyam al ma'duda, we're a few days away from Ayyam al ma'duda from a few days. A few days away from a month that's only a few days long. In those few days, we want to take full advantage. So we should start preparing now. We should start get, putting in our efforts now. We should start looking into the book that Allah has sent us, the guidance that Allah has sent us. We should start looking into the, into the life of the one who was the perfect explanation of that book. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They come together. We can't if we can't understand the Qur'an without understanding how it was, of how it was applied by the one it was sent to. And we can't understand the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi unless we unless we understand the book that was sent to him. They're codependent. So in these last few days, we should plant our seeds and then this next month, we should water those seeds, continue continue building our good habits. So that in Ramadan, when, it, when the time comes, we feel that, that we feel the, the spirituality that we're looking for. And we find ourselves easily submitting towards Allah, submitting ourselves to Allah. If we, felt, if we feel that we've lost a great amount of time, we should remember that Allah is willing to accept the one who turns to Him. The the right? That the one who makes tawbah is literally the one who turns to Him. The one who repents is literally, what it literally means is to turn to face back towards Allah, or to face back towards the thing. In, in this context, it means towards Allah, right? To to, to turn our hearts back towards Allah. Allah accepts the ta'ib immediately. Perhaps when somebody wrongs us, it might take us some time. It might take us some time to accept the one who turns back to us. Right? For a parent, for example, and one of our, and, and our, one of our, child, one of our children, you know, is, uh, disrespects us. How quickly would the parent out of the love for the child, how quickly would the parent accept the child? The unconditional love that a parent has, the love that Allah, that the love, the love that Allah has for for us, and the acceptance of the repentance that Allah has for us is greater than that of the parent. So, if we feel that we've missed out, it's not too late. Allah can Allah can allow you to move through the degrees within a shorter amount of time. And it doesn't take much more than, than sincere orientation. Sincere orientation is all it takes. And the one who has sit, the one who has sincerity, they won't be turned away empty-handed from Allah, from the most merciful. So if you feel that we missed out the time of Raja, or feel that we're not prepared for Sha'aban or for Ramadan, you shouldn't feel that way. It's as simple as us turning and orienting ourselves towards Allah and Allah is, is going to inshallah accept if He gives us a tawfiq to, uh, to be accepted. We ask Allah that He accepts our, our actions. We ask Allah that He accepts our intentions. We ask Allah that He accepts our orientation towards Him. We ask Allah that He allows us to be people who have the to turn towards Him. We ask Allah to be people who are consistent tawbah, consistent repentance, consistent orientation towards Him. We ask Allah that we consistently recognize our faults and recognize that, that we have faults and we ask Allah that, we, that, he, that, he, that he prepares those faults. We ask Allah that He allows us to be people who are aware of our own faults before we're aware of the faults of others. We ask Allah that we see no fault in others and that we see faults in ourselves so we may repair ourselves. 
We ask Allah that He allows us to rectify our own actions and our own intentions. We ask Allah that He allows us to be people who have sincerity in our repentance. We ask Allah that He be a, He, he makes us people who take the means. And we ask Allah that He be people who see the effects of our means. We ask Allah that He allows us to be people who have barakah in their in their in their rajab and in their sha'ban. We ask Allah that He allows us to be people who have barakah and allows us to reach Ramadan and allows us to have barakah in Ramadan and what comes after Ramadan. We ask Allah that He allows us to derail the train of whatever of whatever bad habits we might have. We ask Allah that He allows us to, to rectify ourselves as this month comes and take this as this month to be a means of us learning how to turn towards Allah. We ask Allah that this be a this be a month in which we have constant, we have proximity towards Allah, that we are close to Allah. We ask Allah that He doesn't distance ourselves from Him. We ask Allah that He allows us to to see our peace only in him. So we say, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarak ya man jalali wal ikram hayyina wa rikinna daru salam rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa fi al-adab al-nar We ask Allah that he loves us too, that he blesses our teachers, especially our first teachers, our parents. Rabbi rahamhuma kima rabbayani sagheera 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 we ask Allah that we recognize that Allah and His angels send His send about blessings and salutations on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're asked to do the same. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuha al-ladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ahli Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ashabi Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala atba'i Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ahbabi Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ummati Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik sallim wa salli alayhi إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة